All right, Science, Technology and Innovation Minister Dr. Blade Zimanda joins us now for a further discussion on that strategy. Good evening, Minister. Thank you very much for joining us on the program. So you unveiled the country's astro-tourism strategy today alongside, of course, Tourism Minister, tourism minister uh, Patricia De Lille a bit earlier on. But before you take us through the strategy, let's start with what astro-tourism is, just for the benefit of those who might not be aware. Thank you very much, Mfundo. Thanks for inviting me. And good evening to your viewers and, and listeners. Well, astrotourism is actually about inviting visitors and guests to actually see and examine and enjoy astronomy and astronomy facilities that we have in our country. We are here in the Northern Cape because we have our square kilometer array, which has got 64 dishes at the moment for what we call the meerkat, to study the universe and the stars. And we are going to be starting now even a bigger project, which is the Square Kilometer Array, which is going to have more than 100 dishes. And uh, as I say, astronomy is about the study of the universe and about the study of uh, the, <coughs> the, the stars. And mm -hmm. there are lots of benefits, by the way, out of that. If I may just start the uh, fundo. Wi-Fi derived from astronomy. Without astronomy, we would not have had Wi-Fi today. Mm -hmm. Your GPS, which gives you directions, you know, people say, send me a location. That comes from astronomy. Without astronomy, we would actually not have been able to do that. So it's also got direct benefits. For instance, the square kilometer array, which is going to be set up, is going to generate data that, as I'm talking to you now, we don't have that computer capacity. So there's an opportunity there to build high computing facilities, which will enable us to manage then a lot of other data, not only data coming from astronomy, so that we are able to plan better as a country, we are able to build a capable state, and we are actually also able to train young people in computer science and other skills and so on. So astrotourism is to say, as South Africa, by the way, we have got lots of astronomical or astronomy projects that we have that we can invite. A lot of tourists who are interested in a broader area of science tourism, mm -hmm. which is what we want to take this to the next step. Mm -hmm. We are the cradle of humankind. Humankind was born here on the African continent. We also, by the way, have one weather station for the whole of the African continent, which monitors space weather which is becoming more important in the light of climate change, that space weather also is important. In terms of aviation, it's not just the ordinary weather below space, but also space weather now can actually have an impact. Mm -hmm. So that's what astrotourism is, and that's what astronomy is. So our work with Minister Dilil, which we're launching today, is to say, as South Africa, if you want to see some amazing astronomy and astronomy projects come to South Africa and see what it is. So that will benefit us in terms of tourists, but also science will benefit because we're also going to attract people, some of whom are likely to want to invest in science, technology, and innovation in South Africa. So it's a very creative initiative mm. that we've actually launched with Minister Tilly. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate the fact that you explain practically the benefits we all derive, as you say, your Wi-Fi, your GPS, because sometimes it is important that individuals who are listening to this interview can locate their own benefits so they don't think it's a more esoteric subject or one that is a higher barrier to entry. So when you put it in the most practical sense, how we all benefit from astrology, it's honestly quite beautiful the way you put it. But then to the strategy itself, and more importantly, the investment, because many are saying yes. that most certainly there's going to be a need for greater investment in the infrastructure that probably, yes, will be offset with the kind of jobs that will be created. But is it a significant investment that will have to come from government? You see, over the next 10 to 15 years, it's going to be billions of rents because this project, by the way, the Square Kilometer Array, it's a global project. It's multinational. We've got European countries, we've got Asian countries like China who are part of it, and we are ready with investment. For instance, in, in South Africa for a start, we'll be building a visitor center. I wish to invite you, by the way, uh, 
the from together mm -hmm. and even actually broadcast from there as the SAPC. Mm -hmm. You will be bowled over to be quite honest. We're going to be building a visitor center in order to be ready to receive a tourist. Right. But we're already putting in a lot of money into this community to say the community must benefit. We've got scholarships, as I have actually said, including postgraduate scholarships. There's also job creation because lots of jobs have been created already to actually build the Meerkat and also to build the forthcoming square kilometer uh, array here. We've also, by the way, put two laboratories in the one high school here in Kanamo and the one primary school. Mm. They've got full-blown science laboratory now because we want in future, by the way, to be the youth from this area that maintains this square kilometer array, which is the single largest science infrastructure in the world, as, and not only re rely on outsiders. We are also training technicians from our TVET colleges and universities of technology who are playing a role in the whole management of this. And it is very important also that I, I actually say this, that the, the, the visitor center that we are building and other facilities, they are also being used, by the way, by the rest of government. Social development, for instance, in some of the facilities we've built here, is running HIV programs and other programs that actually need to be, to be run. So it's very important what we are doing and that we are investing in the community so that they don't feel like spectators, mm. but they are actually part of what is going on here. Now, let me tell you, by the way, Pondo, the dilemma we have is that already we are told, by the way, that one of the supermarkets used to close at one in this area. They now close at six in the evening mm. because with the economic input, there is now more people who are buying, who are getting income. The dilemma we have is that this place is going to grow as we put in money, yes. but we've got to arrest its growth because astronomy, the reason why we brought it to this area, it requires a quiet area and with a clear sky in the evening. Ah. And the Northern Cape is the best when it comes to And that was actually Which going to be my next question. Pardon me for interjecting there. That in our intro, we spoke about a very small population with low pollution. That with the amount of infrastructure development that's going to take place, you would see a lot of people flocking there. But also the pollution that now they pride itself on, on having very low pollution. That's what we have to manage. Mm. That's why also this in itself must be accompanied by other scientific interventions. How we manage pollution. Science is very important in that. How strangely we'll actually have to hold back on more rapid development of this place because then it will defeat the whole purpose. Because the reason why we come to the North Cape is the, is the quietness and the blue skies, especially in the evenings, which is required for these big machines of ours, these umbrellas you see, yes. to actually listen and study the skies and actually study the universe. That is the challenge we have, but I'm very convinced this has been well planned. By the way, this thing was not given to us on a plate. We bid for this, like we built for the World Cup in 2010. Mm. And South Africa was selected from a number of countries together with, with Australia. But also even then, South Africa is going to have the larger numbers of these dishes in order to be able to do this. And of course, the condition is that the place must continue being able to be used for astronomy. And in the process, we're going to generate a lot of science. I can tell you now, you know, when you actually talk to these youngsters like the school kids about astronomy, yes. they become so excited. Remember, so long ago, we were having an international conference. For instance, answering interesting questions like, are we alone in this universe? Is there other life in other planets that are there? Mm. All those are very important, important questions. questions. True. Mm. No, it's quite it impressive. Is. And, and mm. what they do, they make our youth to actually think creatively, to have curiosity. And curiosity, by the way, is the foundation for being innovative, mm. no, which certainly. is what we hope is actually going to happen. And the fact that we have this is a huge vote of confidence in terms of the capacity of South Africa for science. As I say, we also have the only space weather station in the whole of the African continent, which is being used to assist aviation, by the way, in the continent. Mm. 
Mm. Minister, it's quite impressive. Thank you very much for joining us on The Full View. And one little thing that you could do to manage the population is to not extend the invitation beyond Bongiwe and I. So we're definitely coming. Don't extend it any further. Thank you very much I'm for joining us. I'm inviting you. No doubt. Just wait for my email. All right. Thank you, Minister, for joining us. That's Science, Technology and Innovation Minister, Dr. Blade Nzimande.